The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Newey Scruggs. Here we are on Friday, everybody. It is the Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is Danny McRae. Church is out today. For, out. Good, for good reason. For good reason. So we're not going to make fun of them today, man. We miss you, Church. Just, we're just going to say we miss you. You know, last podcast of the regular season, and, and we're going to miss you for this one, okay? But now we don't have to deal with your outrageous outtakes uh, about Justin Herbert and, and Joe Burrow and all this other stuff. So it, it'll be okay for me. I get the hype of Joe Burrow all day today. I need you to text him because we need his prediction for the game, Philadelphia tomorrow night. And we need his prediction for the Charger Raider game when okay. it goes to the playoffs. So we need to we need to go ahead. And oh, get he, that he, his prediction is already there. He said that the Chargers are going. And, oh, oh, and, they, okay. and they're going further than uh than uh Cincinnati. Okay. That wouldn't be a stretch if he did that. If, if the Chargers made it, it would not shock me at all if uh if if that happened because poor Cincinnati's history <laughs> trying yeah. to win playoffs. Well, they say right now they're gonna have to play um uh, New England. Is what I see. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, okay. I'm, right I'm comfortable. Now Buffalo. New uh, England uh, plays Buffalo. What they were talking about, d- depending on who wins and who loses, their their prediction is okay. that Joe Burrow will be going against my man <laughs> Bill Belichick, and I'm okay with that. Okay. okay, you see, we did. We already got Saban. He got Saban. Okay, and Saban's a. We okay with that. Okay. I, I just, for me, it's not the quarterback as much as the coaching. Come play out that, that That's my fear. I, I'm sorry. I I just believe Zach Taylor is a okay head coach. What did you believe about Ogeron? Okay head coach. What did Joe Burrow do for him? And <laughs> that's okay. And, and look, All right. And and I just think if you're if you're asking him against Belichick, I just think that that's a tall order. That's a tall order. You know I love Joe, but that's just a tall order, especially if the other guy on the other side can't help you. Um, I don't know if you ever watched the Belichick Saban HBO special. Mm-mm. Fantastic television. And he had a great line in there. Bill said, you can't overcome bad coaching. Because you simply can't, cannot do it. No matter how good your players are, you cannot overcome bad coaching. But they have Nui. Andy Reid is a good coach. And the enemy is a good – they are good coaches over there. You know what just happened to them? Joe Burrow overcame whatever you just said is bad yeah. coaching, overcame it. All right, all right. And, and – I'm only going to say this to playoffs. Oh yeah, listen. I, and, and you play, and you've been in the playoffs. I have not, unfortunately. Oh, you did? <laughs> no, I didn't make it. Uh, well, but thank you though. That was that's Barry. It's not me. No, I didn't How make many? it. Eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight. Thank you. That was that was me. I was eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight. And then I was six and ten before that. And then I was four and twelve. I mean five and eleven with the Bears. And then I was four and twelve when I got back. So my my record as a football NFL football player not so good. And I reiterate what I just said to you. <laughs> no, no. Hey, you can't, you can't overcome that coach. A, they, bad went, coach. they went to the playoffs both times that I left. That coach. Both times that I left, they went to the playoffs. With that coach that you're talking about. All right. Shout out to JG, man. Shout out to your playoff runs, coach of the year, and all that. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. Maybe he'll maybe he'll be a coordinator next year for someone. We'll see. We're glad it's not New York. Because Joe Judge them up there stinking it up, trying to blame it on somebody else. They, hey. Just like just like uh just like Cleveland blamed the offensive problems on Odell Beckham and Odell went out there and did what he's doing and, and Cleveland's still sucking. Jason Garrett is gone. How many points per game has New York put up? I just Maybe twelve? I'm just hoping Joe Judge wins. I mean, <laughs> wins what? I mean uh, Joe Judge stays. <laughs> okay, I just need Joe Judge to stay up there as the head coach. Um it's a travel day for the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Friday, they play tomorrow night. They played Sunday night. How much of a disadvantage from a body clock for a player is that, Danny? Uh, I, I will say this. This is not as short of a week as playing on a Sunday and then having to play on a Thursday. So I, I think you're, you're more okay uh, under this circumstance than you are when you have to play those three games in 12 days, which is rough on your body, especially if it's physical teams that you are having to play. Uh, I think they're okay for this one especially since there's going to be a lot of backups in the game. You already got your playoff spot locked in. So if, if if anything does go crazy, you can still pull your starters out and put those backups in and let them get some extra playing time. So I think I think it's okay for this one. Those Sunday to Thursday games, though, 
that those are tough. That's why you see those type of injuries. Yes. Usually when you play in those games, or usually it's like a really uh a really big defensive game, or are you scoring a whole bunch of points because somebody's not not showing up how they usually do? Uh, I look at this, and the Cowboys are favored in the football game. But as more and more guys face issues here, I'm losing my confidence from the standpoint of who's going to be out here. You got Diggs, who's hasn't tested positive, not in COVID protocol, but they're like, he's got an illness, we've got to watch it. So you're monitoring that. And Unfortunately, I think people don't take serious. Okay, he's got ill. We don't know what that could be. Okay? I mean, we don't know. Right. And that could affect him trying to play on, on sun, uh, Saturday night in Philadelphia. Uh, Donovan Wilson, same thing. An illness. They hadn't really told us what it is, but they're monitoring it. So he could play. And if he plays, maybe not 100%. So the, the Cowboys are going to – I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see how this game goes. And then, of course – with Philadelphia and, and what they decide to do with, with their own players. So um, right we, now. We will have more to Philadelphia. So we should, if you look at it on paper, we should still be okay to beat Philadelphia. I believe that we will have more firepower, more of our starters, more of our impact players playing in the game than Philadelphia will. And we also have more to play for than Philadelphia. So I believe that we'll, we'll do we, – we should do better. I think we stack up better against what they should have uh, be putting out there on the field this you week. Know, looking at this this list of uh, playoff seed possibilities, Philly could end up moving to the sixth position here. It's slim, but but definitely a, a possibility here. So um, – That ain't the two. <laughs> Listen, it's slim. But it's a possible. You need L.A. You need the Rams to lose, the Bucks to lose, and who else? Is that it? Um, yeah. That Rams and Bucks. Okay, listen, it's all right. Yeah, it's slim, but it's possible. What you don't want to do, like I said, is you don't want to go out here and mess off this game, and then have those two teams lose on okay, Sunday. There's, there's two scenarios, and let me give you the two scenarios and what you need to happen. The first one is Cowboys obviously have to win. Carolina needs to beat Tampa. Niners need to beat the Rams. Seattle needs to beat Arizona, and New Orleans needs to beat Atlanta. The other scenario, Cowboys win, Carolina beats Tampa, San Francisco tops the Rams, Seattle beats Arizona, and Atlanta beats New Orleans. This is like, but think about what you just said, though, and how doable that is, all right? You're talking about conference games, well, divisional games between uh, Russell Wilson and whoever's going to be playing against a quarterback for the 49ers, right? Is that the 49ers and the Seahawks? Yes. So that that is that is a possibility. Okay. Right? Then you got the Rams versus Arizona. Arizona. No, no, no. Rams, Rams and Niners. Rams, Rams and Niners. I'm sorry, it's Rams, it's Rams and Niners. So the Niners can definitely beat the Rams. Okay. And then you got uh then you got Seattle and Arizona. Seattle can definitely beat Arizona. These are things that can happen. Okay. Right? And then, then this New Orleans and Atlanta game, like th- this isn't even one of those ones where you're like, all right, it will have to take a miracle for for that to happen. It can happen. You got so, Taysom Hill playing and you got Matt Ryan playing. I mean, it's, we, we're okay. This is not as far of a stretch as I think some people think it is. So we need okay. to go out and handle business on Saturday. All right, so Danny, that's the two scenarios to get up to the number two seed. There are two scenarios to get the number three seed. And in that case, obviously the Cowboys have to win. Tampa Bay beats Carolina. The Niners beat the Rams. Seattle beats Arizona. New Orleans beats Atlanta. The second scenario to get the number three seed, the Cowboys beat Philadelphia, Tampa beats Carolina, Rams lose to the 49ers, Seahawks beat Arizona, Atlanta beats New Orleans. So basically, tell me if I'm tripping about about, about the two seed, or the possibility, based on the N- NFC West and, and what how competitive it is, it is, and you know, the quarterbacks that will be playing in that game and the coaches that will be coaching those games, it is very possible for it to fall in our favor, in, especially in the NFC uh, West matchups. Okay. Tampa ah, is it, iffy, but that was the Jets that they almost lost to last week. Would you like to know the scenarios in which it could be the Cowboys and Rams? What wait? What, what seed would that be for us? Four. That would be us with the four versus okay, five. That's five. All right. Four versus yes. five. So, um, in uh, there's what one, two, three, four, five. There's six. So there's six scenarios, and um, 
Dallas ends up winning. Tampa beats Carolina. San Francisco beats the Rams. Arizona beats Seattle. New Orleans beats Atlanta. The other one, Dallas beats Philly. Tampa beats Carolina. Niners beat the Rams. Arizona beats Seattle. Atlanta beats New Orleans. The other Dallas versus the Rams scenario in the first round. Dallas beats Philly. Carolina beats Tampa. San Francisco beats the Rams. Arizona beats Seattle. New Orleans beats Atlanta. The other scenario, Dallas beats Philly. Carolina tops Tampa. San Francisco beats the Rams. Arizona tops uh, Seattle. Atlanta beats New Orleans. Then another one, right? Philly beats Dallas. Tampa beats Carolina. San Francisco beats the Rams. Arizona beats Seattle. New Orleans beats Atlanta. The other scenario here, Philly. Is this the last one? No, man. No, 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 no. Hey, listen. We're... <laughs> so, so, so there's a lot. But, but bottom line, it can happen. It can happen. Now, the most likely scenario, the odds, uh, and I can't remember. What's the thing we, we you, you study in, in uh, business class about standard deviation or whatever? So, um it, it, the standard deviation is, is basically telling you, uh, one, is going to be Dallas and Arizona. Two, still going to be Dallas and Arizona. A third deviation uh, will most likely be a Dallas Rams. I'm going number two seed. All right? okay. I think that this thing can happen. And I'm, and I'm, going, I'm, I'm going by this from experience. I don't remember exactly what it took for us uh, in 2007 to get to the national championship for LSU, but – we were a two-loss national championship mm-hmm. yeah, uh, team, that. right? And when we beat, I want to say it was Tennessee in the SEC championship, we're on the plane. We needed, like, the top three teams to lose. I want to say it was, like, West Virginia. I forget. It was West Virginia and, like, two other teams. And they're announcing this. And it's like, okay, West Virginia lost. Oh, the next team lost. The next team lost. And we just go crazy. But nobody had us picked to go to the national championship that year because we were a two-loss team. Okay. I think Ohio State was also below as well, and they needed some other teams to win, and it worked out for us, and we won one national championship. So it's possible. Yeah, they got. They said that one where in, uh, Ohio State got beat up, and they had Urban Meyer eating pizza <laughs> on the card after the game. It's like some whoever they play, they beat up. I mean, they beat up Ohio State. I mean, it Wisconsin, but somebody beat them. No, up no I forgot. That I, the one you, no, no, no. 2007, the head coach for Ohio State, that was uh, right after was Trussell. Trussell. Who was right after him? Fickle. Whoever, whoever it was. I don't know. Beanie Wells was the running back. That's, that's, that's what I know. Beanie okay. Wells was the running back. Okay. But – it happened for us. So it's possible. This is why I have the I have some type of faith that it can happen because it's happened for me before. So number two seed, we can get it, but the first thing we gotta do is win on Saturday night, because it's all irrelevant if we go out there and lose on, on Saturday. Okay. All right. Look, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. And the Cowboys, especially offensively, have to come out in this football game and set the tone. This is where Kellen Moore in my opinion, has got to do what you've been asking for and what Mike McCarthy's been asking for. Play some complimentary football. Run it. Run it. Run the darn thing. And if uh, Amari Cooper is, is, is good to go, so far it looks like he's good to go, can you give 19 to football? Last game you won, you gave, gave a steady diet to number 19. Do it. You know, can we do it until we see it doesn't work? I mean, that, that's what I'd be thinking right now. Hey, it kind of worked. Let me feed this guy, force feed this guy until it doesn't work. That's the crazy thing. I have not seen it not, not work. work. <laughs> I haven't seen it not work. As a matter of fact, when you do it, it's like starting from when we made the trade to get him, when you do it, you look like a totally different team. When you don't say, hey, man, I'm going to spread the ball out around to everybody. That ain't how it works. <laughs> how so, it works is you get the talented guys the ball, especially the guy that you're paying $20 million, who you say is the best route runner possibly in the league, who is knocking on your door saying, hey, if y'all want to win, let Booby spin. Give so, me the ball. So let me just simply ask this question here, because this, is, this, this comes to you being a player. You're on this team. You clearly see what's going on. Do you ever have a conversation with Dak? Hey, man, I'm on the defense, but I'm just going to ask you a question. Should you be feeding 19 more? I see 12 feeding 17 Green Bay. Been been working like crazy. 
I mean, can you have that conversation or is that out of pocket? I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. Me, when when I was playing and the level of a player that I was and my the salary that I was making, I wasn't going to Tony Romo tell him to throw it to Miles Austin or Dez Bryant. Okay. Right? It has to be somebody who has that type of relationship with Dak. First person comes to mind, Zeke. Well, guess what? He ain't getting the ball either. <laughs> so so you think he's going to go vouch for Mark Cooper to get the ball? He ain't getting it? So, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think that conversation has happened. That's something that needs to happen from the head coach down to Kellen and then be passed on down to D- Dak to say, hey, like, this is what we need to do because we saw it happen. Like, we know that somebody had to get in his ear the game that Amari Cooper got force fed to okay. say, hey, man, give this guy the ball. So, Tyron Smith, respected player. Zach Martin, respected player. Can they say something? The, them, them offensive linemen, <laughs> they, they, they could say some as far as probably running the ball possibly. Like, hey, man, hey, look, look, we want to get down here. We, we want to maul these guys. We want to set the tone. We want to show them how physical we are. Like, let, let us spin. They could say something like that. I don't, they, I don't think they're going to walk to the deck and be like, hey, bro, throw the ball to 19. You're all, you're all lineman. Like I said, this whoever said it to him last time needs to say it to him again. It needs to be reiterated. I, I don't know if he's a Cowboy fan, but you know who could talk to Dak? Who? Draymond Green. <laughs> that like Draymond Green, boy. Now, that's what, hey, hey, Draymond, can, can you call Dak? Draymond's won some championships. Draymond's lost a championship. I mean, somebody who can just sit up here and keep it real, just get into Dak's did, ear and just say, feed 19, did man. Did they say that Draymond may be the reason that Kevin Durant got up out of uh, Golden State? Okay, so we, no, Draymond, don't call here. All right, you stay up there. And you stay up there. The, by the okay, well, then is, is, is it Michael Irvin? Michael Irvin has said enough. <laughs> I'm saying he, they see him every Friday on first take. He said enough. <laughs> throw the man the ball. We just haven't been able to figure out how to do it. And maybe, maybe because we know this is how Mike McCarthy and his team has worked since since he's been here, playing it close to the are, chest. Are, are we playing it close to the. So this is this is gonna happen when we get into the playoffs. Everything that we've saying, they like we've been we've been holding this. We've been holding this. We're gonna we're gonna flip the script on whoever on whatever defense we're playing, and it's gonna be a totally different game plan. And I, that's how we're gonna win the uh, win the Super Bowl. I, I feel like you just said Michael Irvin's voice has been tuned out. Hey man, listen. When you're in the locker room, it don't matter. It don't matter who is speaking. You try to block out the outside noise, okay. including the players' lounge. All right, so we just here talking amongst ourselves. They don't care about what we're talking about, that, and that's obvious. Uh, so yeah, I think they're probably as far as when you're trying to tell somebody to throw the ball here or, or run the ball. If it's Michael Irvin, they still tuning it out. They are focusing on the task at hand and the people that's in the locker room as they should. All right. Um... An excuse was offered for a player who's had a mediocre season. Should we buy the excuse? Let's dive into that next. He is Danny McRae. I'm Newey Scruggs. Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. (laughs) And if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem like me. Not available in every state based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek. Get your seat in a seat. 
Back to the Players' Lounge. All right, Cowboy fans, your favorite WWE superstars return to AT&T Stadium for WrestleMania on Saturday, April 2nd and Sunday, April 3rd. Get your tickets to the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in history. Visit SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Um, whew. We got excuses coming up? You, you know my, my, um, my disappointment in the kicker, right? You know that. Mm-hmm. Greg Zerline, to me, has not had a good year. I feel like uh, Greg Zerline is um, an issue. I think the Tampa game, he, he lost. Just four points out there. The uh, Vegas Thanksgiving Day game, he lost. Four points left out there. And this past game, you lose by three. Guy left three points out there. A 43-yard kick indoors in your place. You got to make that. This okay? is true. You got to make that. So, John Fossil spoke to the media yesterday, and this is what he had to say about his kicker. It's probably going to be like the Tampa, you know, had a couple misses, and then he comes back and he hits some game winners. Part of this, too, is a product of he had the surgery in May, so he missed a lot of spring and summer when he, when he usually kind of finds that sweet spot. Training camp was getting, was getting his leg back to be able to swing. And so, in a little bit of fairness to him, he spent quite a bit of time during the season doing what he'd normally do during the summer, still trying to find that thing. He's going to find it. He's going to find it. My, mark my word. If not, put it on me. So the summer, the summer is what, June? It's June, all of June, right? Because you ain't doing nothing in July. And then August, all right? So even if you add that up, that's September, October, you were still missing kicks in November at the end. So I'm, I'm confused. I don't, I don't understand. Brother, it's a horrible excuse, man. Listen, just, uh, hey man, just say, man, he's just not kicking well. well yeah, you'd have to give us a reason for it, no excuse. Nope. Hey, man, listen, he's having one of those seasons where it's been up and down, but I believe that he's going to, to, to catch on and he's going to get hot. I, that, like, just say that. Not like, you know, uh, you, you, you the coach. You brought him in. Yeah, we're going to put it on you. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> what do you mean? Who else are we going to put it on? We asked, and he gave us his answer. He rationalized it by trying to say, He's been hurt. And to that I say, okay, put his butt on IR and go find someone else. If he can't do the job, if he's not 100%, don't send him out there. I'm sorry. You can try and tell me you may think he's, he's 80% of him is better than other people's 100%, but clearly it hasn't been. And it's cost you football games. And if this dude wasn't right, especially the first game, man, you shouldn't have, you did your team a disservice by sending him out there. Okay? If you knew this dude wasn't legit and he was not good in that first Tampa Bay game, that's that's damning to me. Because if he can't go, he can't go, man. Don't put him out there. Listen, I, I'm I, he's not getting any more of an excuse. Or Mulligan than Dak did when he went through his slump. All right, okay. this is why I appreciate Dak. I ain't hurt. I don't know what slump y'all talking about, man. We gonna get it right. All right, stuff stuff just ain't happening how we how we expect it to happen. But we gonna we gonna figure out a way to get on track. All right, just go that route. Go that route. Dak has more reason to blame something on injury than our kicker Greg Zerline. All right, he. Had the season-ending uh, surgery last year. He comes back. He got tendonitis, whatever he got in the muscle during training camp. He has a calf injury. Dak has not mentioned that. You know who else ain't mentioned that? Jerry, uh, McCarthy, Kellen. They ain't mentioned that. Hey, man, we going we gonna, we gonna to worry about what we're doing in here, and y'all worry about putting out whatever y'all want to put out. Not – not, not, not my man Bones Fossil. Hey, man, and I understand that you got to take up for your guy. All right? You got to take up for him. But let's just just ease off with the excuses, my brother. All right, hey man, hey he gonna get hot. I got faith in him. He gonna kick us. I mean, if you say this, hey, if, if if the game is on the line, this is what I was. If the game is on the line, and he's he's the guy who's kicking uh, for us to go to the Super Bowl, I have the ultimate faith that when that time comes, he is going to make the kick, and I'll and I'll stand on that and live by it and die by it. That's how you take up for your player. Now, nah, hey man, he been hurt. He probably hurt. He probably hurt. That's, that's probably what's wrong with him, if I'm guessing. And if he ain't hurt, then just put it on me. Nah, bro. <laughs> it's May is when he had the surgery. May. 
So January 2nd, your boy's not right? And, and you're still running him out there? He right, bro. He just missing. People miss. What, 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 like what happens to that? You can't just miss a kick? You can't just miss a throw? You, you, can't, just, you can't just miss the cut? Like, hey, well, yeah, does something got to be wrong with you? I, I, I'll give Fossil this. Believable. I, I will believe him from this standpoint. And, and you can speak to this because you played. Okay, maybe he's not 100%. Hey, had the surgery made, tried to get back here and play, was never 100% all year long. Maybe that's the case. That can happen. But don't send him out there. Don't say, This isn't Tank Lawrence. This isn't Amari Cooper. This is a kicker. Dude, if he can't kick it right, get him, on, get him out. Let, and the earlier he did this, you could have found someone. And so you're not sitting around here in January watching this dude still hook kicks to the left. Has he attempted a 60-yarder this year? Yeah, I'm pretty so, sure he did. So, it, there's no, it no way that you can tell me that you believe that he is still recovering from a surgery in May and you have the confidence to put him out there to okay. kick a 60-yarder. Uh, like, if you know you got a, a hurt kicker. Chris, look that up for us. If you know if you got a hurt kicker, what you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, man, this might be out of his range right now. Okay. I'm looking out for my guy. I'm not going to put him out there in a the position to kick a 60-yarder. Let's punt it. Let's figure out something else we could do. But if you roll him out there to kick his deepest kicks – then you believe he's healthy enough to make them kicks. Okay. That's that that's your mindset. Cause if you're not, then you, you you're not doing that. You're going for two. When you when you got extra points, you're figuring out a way to take some stuff off the kicker. We ain't done that. I don't remember us doing that at all. Greg Lee. I, mean, I, mean, I know he kicked a 59 yard. I know that for sure. So. But my point is, he he's healthy enough for the coaches to believe that he can make a kick that far. He's healthy enough to be out there kicking. All right. Sometimes you just miss. Kickers go through that. Man, Dan Bailey go through that. Even Justin Tucker missed a couple, I want to say, last year where we was like, oh, okay. Justin Tucker never missed kicks. People miss kicks. I don't know, I don't, I don't know anybody that's 100%. The dude having one of them years, all right, he might be a little rusty, but, hey, man, we are going to depend on you. We're going to stick by you to kick us to the Super Bowl. That's it. So we're talking about a whole lot of people who need to show and prove something on Sunday or should say Saturday night, as the Cowboys face Philadelphia. I think he's right there. As much as you're looking at Dak Prescott to say, you know, hey, man, uh, you need to get this thing turned around. Show us, some, you know, show us you're on the uptick here. Greg Zerline, to me, is right there. You need to kick some field goals, man. There needs to be some – because right now, when the Cowboys score a touchdown, I don't go anywhere. You, know, you don't go get up and get a drink. You don't turn around and talk to anybody. No, you know, got to watch what this. What was your question again about Zerline? Uh, okay. 60 yarders. How many does he kick this year? Uh, I don't know how many he's kicked this year. His longest this year was 56. 56. So his longest make. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll look into how many he kicked that's over a uh, uh, 60. That, that's a long attempt. That's a long make. And <laughs> when, he hit, when he hit that kick, the assumption is he was healthy. He was good to go. Is that not right? He played a good game. We come, we come out uh, yes. some weeks and yes. we were like, hey, man, Greg, he, he, had some, he had a good game. He showed up. This is what we expected when we signed him. He's come out and had those games. So the same, the same way we said, hey, bro, you did good. Okay. It's the same way we're going to say, hey, man, come on. I don't want to hear nothing about no surgery. Okay, because last week you was fine. All right, this week you just ended up missing, missing, missing a couple. And it cost us in the game, but that's the league. That is the, that is the essence of competition. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. But the excuse part of it is like, bro, come on. And he didn't make the excuse. So I'm not I'm not getting on great delay. I'm just saying his coach is trying to take up for him and then going back in history and saying this is what he usually is able to do at this time, but he hasn't been able to because of the, the surgery. I, I just don't have confidence. I don't right now. And come playoff time, how can you? How can you have confidence in him right now in the playoffs? I, listen, <laughs> if, if, if we're at home – I, this is this is that homer. This is that that bias type thing. I, because I've seen him make fifty six, and I've seen him be able to do it, and he's literally all we have. I have confidence that when it when it comes down to it, he's going to be able to make the kick. Okay. If it comes down to it, but what I do know is that they're going to try everything they can to make sure that they get that ball in the end zone versus having to, to settle for a kick. So when you have that that time at the end of the game where it's like, hey, should we try to should we try to get this thing in the end zone or should we should we run the clock out so we can uh, so we can kick this thing to a dub like uh, Cincinnati did against uh, Kansas City so, so uh, last week. I, I want to put it to you. You were here for Dan Bailey, correct? I was here for Dan Bailey. Okay, and you were a special teams guy. The juice and the confidence you had when when he walked out there was. Oh, I, call, I called him Golden Toe. 
Me and Dan, we had our little thing. Hey, go to, hey, we know you good. I turn, I'll be walking in the uh, in the locker room before uh, Dan Bailey before they even snapped the ball because Dan Bailey was that automatic type of guy. Which at one point Zerline was that type of guy, and I think that's what Bones is looking for. And hopefully he's that type of guy in the play. We're gonna call him Playoff Greg the League, like they gave Playoff Lenny. He's gonna be pre- Playoff Greg. Yeah, we were like Playoff P. <laughs> no, 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 that's the butt. That's the butt. <laughs> No, no, playoff grid. Playoff Z. No, no. He got 50 plus this year, Nui. Huh? 50 plus this year. That's all I have right now. I haven't looked into 60 plus. Right, listen, I know he attempted a 60. Two, right? you yeah, know. Two, the, two of five this year. Listen, it, 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 the fact that he attempted five from 50 plus lets me know that they believe he's healthy enough to make them kicks. Okay. All right. Um, prediction time. Cowboys play tomorrow against the Philadelphia Eagles. Cowboys are favored. We'll do that next. I'm New York's He's Danny McCray's Players Now. It's brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. <laughs> and if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Not available in every state, based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. We're turning your living room into your office and your gym. We're teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone, new and existing customers, our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back to the Players' Lounge. Dak Prescott is the nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award for the Dallas Cowboys, presented by Nationwide. Recognizing NFL players for outstanding community service activities off the field and excellence on it. Help Dak earn a $25,000 donation to his Faith Fight Finish Foundation by voting on Twitter. Tweet, hashtag WPMOY challenge, followed by Prescott through January 17th. Vote Dak. Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. Barry Church with a day off. Um, prediction time here. Let's make sure we get into that. Uh, Philadelphia. Me, me Saturday night. Yeah, man. Let me write so, this. Let me write it down. So, so I, I'm going to read it just how he typed it, too. All right. So, Barry, if you're watching, let, you know, text me. Let me know if I did this right. You ready? Mm-hmm. 31-21 Dallas. A whole bunch of exclamation points. So, 31-21 Dallas, okay? Dak in the offense feast on a bunch of backups. Defense gets how many takeaways? Dose. Two takeaways by the defense. Okay. What you got? I am going to only allow Philadelphia to score 17. But our offense will score 35. I think that we find a way to punish these guys, and we do get two takeaways, and I think we score one on defense uh, just based off how our defense feel like they feels like they played last week because I know they feel like they let us down. So I know they're, they're going to try their hardest to go out there and score on defense, and this is going to be one of those games kind of like Washington where we try to get back on track and try to prove that we're ready to go into the playoffs. So I'm saying 35-17. I don't feel good at all about this, man. Ooh. 
I don't feel good at all. Right now, I want to pick Philly. That's what I want to do. I want to pick Philly. You, so, like, out of all weeks for you to pick the other team, you had Kansas City week, you had Arizona week, you want to pick Philly this week? Is Jalen Hurts playing? Yeah. You think he's going to play the whole game? Um, I'm going to go Cowboys 24-21. Ooh. Offense don't get back on track. All right. Defense plays well enough, only gives up, what, three scores? I don't I, I don't feel I don't feel how you feel. I'll just say that. I, I just I, you know what I, I listen to a whole lot of what you said. Hey man, just can't turn this running game on all of a sudden. Either you got it and you're using it all year long, you're not. Um I don't think Philly is one of the teams that you need to have a running game. Uh, I think we seen that earlier in the season where I, I think we could toss toss the ball away. Road game? Yeah. You know, they still don't like you. Their fans go come out there ready for you. I, I don't have a good feeling about this game. I said I, I would I I <sighs> I want to pick Philly, but I'm just going to go 24-17. Nah, I mean, 24-21 Cowboys. Go That's with your gut. Go with your gut, now. Because I, I, when you get back up in here on Monday, I don't want to hear you say, man, I, I knew it. Don't, don't be trying to hedge your bet, bro. This, the, pick the one that you want to go with because you got to stick with it on Monday. We can't come here and say, man, I should have went. I knew I should have went, and I said it. I said it, but I didn't do it. So are you sticking with that one? Because we don't want to hear it on Monday. Your pick is your pick. He's I, I wrote it down. Get off the fence, bro. Come I wrote on. it down. I wrote it down. Are you sticking with your pick? 24-21 Cowboys. That's what I wrote down. All right, so minus the rest of that stuff. So I want to pick. You got to take that out. You you pick Dallas. 24-21. All right? You know who I pick? Dan Quinn. Because what we did mention was he said he's having fun here. That's why he's not doing that interview with Jacksonville. So you what know what? What he didn't mention is Jacksonville's a really bad job. That's, but and if you're going to take another job, that ain't the one to go take. That, no, but what I'm saying was, outside of saying that, what he said was how much fun he's having sure. where he is. Sure. You, you know, he didn't have to say that. He didn't have to say, hey, it ain't the right. Usually what they say, it ain't the right time. I'm focused on what I have to do moving forward for, the, for this season. He said, I mean, I'm, I'm having a blast here in Dallas. And you know, Why would I want to think about doing anything else? And I also take it into this. It's going to take, for him, I, I need a good opportunity to leave here because what I have here is good. Jacksonville is not good. And you and I both know it, okay? That's just a bad situation here that needs a whole lot. And well, I mean, I, you know. You go out in the draft, you get your receiver or something. You got you got you got a guy who you think is a generational generational talent in Trevor Lawrence. You got James Robinson and ETN who who you will have at at that point because James Robinson will be on I believe his last year of his undrafted free agent deal. ETN first round pick that you got last year coming off of uh, foot surgery. You have weapons. Go out there and get you a receiver uh, to be your staple and figure out what you're gonna do. Dan Quinn has been able to rejuvenate this defense, so I'm sure he can figure out a way to make something work in Jacksonville. Actually, let me stop saying this. Dan, you're not listening to this, are you? You ain't listening to this? Okay, so, stay, stay up stay up in D-Time, baby. We love you out here in Frisco. We love you so, in Frisco, so. Texas. Arlington, Texas loves you. Dallas, Texas loves you. Stay here. Now, just looking at – I think we'll see a total of at least four jobs open. Jacksonville's open already. Vegas is open. We're hoping our boy Rich Pisacci gets it. Minnesota's going to open up. Chicago should open up. Four jobs. Of those four openings, what's the worst one? We we know that, okay. we, but we know that. But when you think about Vegas, quarterback, who's your cube? The the first thing you want to have when you get to a squad is, hey man, do I have a guy, right? And if you believe that Trevor Lawrence is a generational talent, like the people that picked him in the, in the uh, with the first pick, then you got you got a start piece. You also have a running back, two of them. Okay. Well, uh, you got thunder and lightning here. Now you got two uh, uh, up in Jacksonville. Okay, and I, I guess I'll say this: in a league where if you get a shot, another one is probably the last one. And if I'm going to go ahead and take a shot, use my last bullet, I won't use it coaching the Jacksonville Jaguars. If I'm Dan Quinn, I won't. I'd rather take it with the Bears or the Vikings. I mean, there's just there's Shoot, just the better Bears places. Is what he probably? I mean, think about it. They look, Who's he got? On defense for the Bears. Woo. You got Robert Quinn. You got Khalil Mack. I mean, so. so got the, two but, young linebackers. But overall, too, with the Bears, there is a very. They've been very patient with some really sorry coaches. 
I mean, well, you, you, you've you, been there. But you're also unsure about your quarterback in, in Chicago as well. When you're looking at it from here okay. and you're saying, hey, man, the, the destination that I'm going to, okay. I'm looking at what what can Justin – like for what they what these coaches have put okay. him through and what you've seen on film, okay. you're not 100% sure that this is your guy. You could potentially, honestly, if you think about it, he could end up being the second best quarterback in the division going into next year. Could be. Could be. Because – Or could not be. I mean, we could, and look, the fans in Minnesota want Kirk Cousins gone. Ain't he all, but, but he's, he's all guaranteed. Eh? Yeah, but he's guaranteed like 40 mils. So I don't see him. But but Aaron Rodgers is probably gone. He, you know, he's got the option to go. He all over the place right now. We have no idea what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. But I, I said potentially. Potentially. So you could end up with, with Justin Fields. And they got Jared Goff in Detroit. Justin Fields could end up. He could, he could enter next. He's the be second the best, best quarterback. Quarter, he could be the, the second best, best quarterback. You could, you could be the second best or the third best in your, in your, in your division. So, no, there's not. No, no, no. I'm saying second. I'm just saying he could be. He could be. He could also. He could also be the third best in his division as well. It's true. I'm just saying. Listen, listen. Let, let, let's. Let's. Yeah, let, I'm just saying. Chicago is an option for Dan Quinn, in my opinion. Let, okay. Let's 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 do this. Okay. So we got. Okay. We still got four minutes. Okay. Well, this is what I believe. So we we did our picks for the Cowboys, and this is a game where no matter what happens. Uh, we're going to the playoffs. All right. Correct. We're going to play blah, blah, blah. There's a team who has to win to make the playoffs. And that is the Los Angeles Chargers. All right. And they're playing our boy, Rich Passaccia, up there in Las Vegas. Now, if Vegas beats LA, there is no playoffs for Justin Herbert. All right. We've been having this discussion all year with Barry. There, there are no playoffs for that guy. All right. And the Las Vegas Raiders will be going to the playoffs. Correct. I don't want to hear any other – I don't want no more talk. No more talk from anybody if Justin Herbert does not take his team to the playoffs. Nothing. Barry, nothing. I don't want to hear anything. And I know you picked the L.A. Chargers to win this week, and you're not here. So I'm telling you right now, I'm picking them to lose. All right? I'm, I'm picking Derek Carr to go out there, carve up Justin Herbert, and, and, and carve his way into the playoffs and help our guy Rich build a case for being the, the next head coach at the, uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. Home game for the Raiders, uh, so it should be packed. Derek Carr needs this, okay? D- Derek Carr needs this. Mm-hmm. He wants to stay in Vegas, wants to remain a Raider for life. This is how you do it. These are the kind of games you have to win. And obviously we know Rich needs it to, to, to solidify himself, not just for this job, but for other openings as well. I mean, if you're Minnesota and Chicago and, and even Jacksonville, you'd be a fool not to interview Rich Passaccia. Right. There's so much substance there with him and what he's been able to do with this organization and all the hits they've taken here, from the head coach to a receiver killing a player. I mean, you know, you've had issues, man. You just had another guy involved with DUI. Up. So, so I think Rich has handled a very, very tough situation here, and I think they win the game. And I think the Raider players, with everything that's happened, you got an opportunity. Can't blow this one. You, you, you simply can't. This is this is the kind of opportunity that guys, you, hey, you're at home. You'll have your fan base. This is the first one you can get for the city of Vegas. I mean, there's no way in the world you blow this opportunity. Man. And I think Justin Herbert's a fantastic quarterback. He's not better than Joe Burrow. Absolutely not. But he's a good quarterback. And they're both really, really good. But I just think the Raiders get this done. All right, last thing. Who, who do you want to play first round? Who is your who is the, who is the best option for us to make it to the second round of the playoffs? Not based on scenarios, just looking at the squads who are in the playoffs. Who is the best option for us to make it to the second round? Arizona. I think it's Arizona. I think it's the Los Angeles Rams. I think the quarterback play from Arizona versus the quarterback play from what they're getting it from the Rams right now. I'd rather have Matthew Stafford come in here to play against us. All right, we can go to SoFi. I would rather have Stafford than Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, super versatile, adds a different uh, dimension to the run game, which makes it a little bit more difficult to play. I understand your position all day long. Matthew Stafford in the playoffs, what does he do? Okay, that's legitimate. Versus Kyler Murray, never lost 18 I see your point there as well. Defense versus defense. I can – I'm not going to argue with your point. Saying, you're crazy. No, you're not crazy. You're not. You're not. I, I would just like to think that 
having faced Arizona and lost a winnable game, a game you should have won, that they would go out in the rematch and get it done. Mm, yeah, I'm Stafford, but come on, baby. Come on, it's going to be a defensive game. Their defense versus our defense, because if our offense doesn't show up, we what we know is Matthew Stafford might not show up either. So there are six scenarios in which that could happen, by the way. Yeah. Okay, there are six scenarios in which that would happen. And in all of those scenarios, the number one thing has to happen. San Francisco's got to win. Which I think they will. And Arizona's got to win over Seattle. So No, we need Seattle to we need Seattle to beat Arizona. We need the 49ers to beat the Rams, and we need Tampa to lose. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need a lot of other stuff, so I don't want to hear none of those. I only want the scenarios that put us at the number two seed. Okay. All right. So you're still holding on to that two seed. Absolutely. I'm holding on to it until <laughs> Sunday night. Okay. There's only two. There's yeah, only I'm two. Hold, yeah, until okay. I'm holding Sunday night. I'm holding on to it until and you need a lot in That's order cool. for it to happen. That's okay. You, you got to – Tampa got to lose. The Rams got to yeah. lose. Arizona got to lose. Uh-huh. That's fine. That's cool. I'm all right with that. Okay. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Make shots come to the bottom of the hour. He's Danny McCray. I'm Louis Scruggs. We appreciate you. We will talk to you on Monday as the Cowboys get ready for the playoffs, and we'll know who they'll face. Talk to you then. Bye. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!